for real from the exorcist. And you are listening to the darkest before dawn. <laughs> Hey everybody, welcome to episode 15, and um, today I have a special guest, Eileen Dietz. How's it going, Eileen? Oh, it's going crazy. It's going good. But, you know, it's like today's the softest, meaning the longest day of the sun. It shines for the longest day of the year, and this is L.A., and it's cloudy, and it's gloomy, and it's drizzling on um, June 21st. It's absolutely insane it's, it's like, cold out there, for, especially for us. Yeah, it's like that today too. I'm in I'm in Rhode Island. It's very rainy and um, kind of crappy. Out, and we're only in like the like low seventies, like like into the sixties. It's not even nice out. And it's like what first day of summer today? Oh, is that tomorrow? <laughs> um, have you always lived in Rhode Island? Yeah, I've I live in Rhode Island my whole life. Yeah, because you have a very strong accent. Yeah, yeah, and people say it all the time, like a Boston accent or like a New York accent. You sound like a, you almost sound like a New York accent. Yeah. But that's get, very bizarre if you spend all your living in New England. Yeah, I get I get that a lot. It's it's really funny. Yeah. So, Eileen, I got like a really cool story to um tell you. Um so I'm okay. I'm a huge horror fan. Like everybody that knows me knows like how much and how passionate I am for horror. And it all started when I was six years old. My mom was laying me down one night, and um, she left the room, and she left the TV on for me. And do you know? Do you know what movie was playing? It was The Exorcist. <laughs> that is the movie that got me so much into horror. And I was sitting there at six years old, and I'm watching The Exorcist, and I was um I was scared shitless. I had no idea what was going on. But I had to find out. Well, have more you, of these has movies. your mother seen that already? I I don't I don't know if my mom ever seen it before. That it was just like kind of on, and I she wasn't really paying attention to the TV, and like I kind of just like you know rolled over, and then the, there's this movie, and I'm like, what is this movie? And I'm you know just like watching it, you know, because I'm curious, a little kid, and then I'm like, well, I'm really scared now. I don't want to sleep in my room by myself. <laughs> Did you tell anybody about it after it was over? Did you uh, watched the. Whole- I, yeah, I watched the whole thing. No, I didn't really tell anybody. I was just really kind of creeped out by it. I didn't understand what that was that I watched. But then, you know, over the years when I started to get older, I'm like, hmm, what was that movie that I watched that really scared me? What kind of movie was that? What kind of scary movie was that? And then, you know, I reached out to all these other different horror movies and, you know, and kind of just grew on me. That's amazing. Yeah, the, the youngest I've ever heard, like, at horror conventions that I do, the youngest I ever heard was five years old. Yeah. But what happened to him is his uncle took him to the movie and said, but you can never tell anybody. I mean, it obviously it wasn't pedophilia, but it was close. Then said, you can't ever tell anybody that I took you because I'll get in a lot of trouble. So supposedly this kid for the next five years didn't tell anybody, and he thought there was a monster living under his bed because he didn't want to throw his uncle under the bus. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like when when I see when the, when I seen the exes for the first time, I was like, I, I don't know if it like scarred me or not. I'm, I was I'm not sure I, like how I felt about it. You know what I mean? <laughs> I see. Yeah, it, no, I know. It's incredible. I see it it's now, really and I'm incredible. like. I see it now, and I'm like, oh, yeah, you know, I really, no, I'm really, like, attached. I really love the movie. It's, like, the first horror movie I've ever seen. And I see it now, and it's just, like, I understand it's a movie. But when I was only, like, at that age, I had no idea what this was. <laughs> yeah, when the, and the thing about The Exorcist, which I'm sure you know, is, I mean, there's no blood. There's no guts. There's no, you know, people pulling people apart. Right. So you really have to, when you got older... You really have to listen to it. You know, you have to, um, yeah, you have to be there. And I've seen little kids, too. They say, oh, no, that didn't scare me. You know, there was no way. You should have listened to the movie and know what was going on. Right. But, um, yeah, it's, um, that's, that's something else at six years old. Now, Your mother should have been more careful. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know she really should have been. But, I, you know, I really thank her for that because, you know, horror has been a huge part of my life ever since. And um, I'm really grateful for that. Favorite horror film? Uh, Halloween. Halloween. The first 
one, obviously. Yeah, the first one. I I, lo- I love the whole franchise, but the first yeah. one's my favorite. Um, Halloween's um, I love Halloween so much. Um, that was like this. I think like the second or third horror movie I've seen after The Exorcist was Halloween. So. What did you What did you think of the last one? Oh, the two thousand. Oh, I really liked it. I thought it was really well done. Um, I'm glad Jamie Lee Curtis was back on uh, board, and I just uh, heard on my, um, I seen on my Facebook and my Instagram that they're going to be working on a part two with uh, Jamie Lee Curtis is going to be in it again. That's what I heard. I wonder how, I wonder what they're paying her for that. <laughs> oh, I can only imagine. I can only imagine. You know, but she gives a lot of it away. Yeah, you I know. know I heard charity. charity. Yep. Yeah. Because uh, she doesn't. So I know that. She did a signing. I, I don't know. Um, I think it was for Sean Clark, mm-hmm. but she did a signing, and I heard that she gave all that money away. Yeah, that's crazy. And I seen um, I have um, a ho- uh, one of the Halloweens on. Uh, no, it's the original Halloween on Blu-ray, and it has a special feature of when Jamie was getting ready for that um, that con, and ho- what she did behind the scenes and everything. Hold on one second. I said I have the original on um on Blu-ray and they show like a lot of behind the scenes of what Jamie did and everything to um prepare for that convention. It was really crazy. She had so many people there to meet her. It was insane. Yeah, that is take. Well, I've always wanted to be a philanthropist, so I'm still working on it. <laughs> oh yeah, you can definitely definitely do it. I know you can. Hey, Eileen, one of my um one of the questions I wrote down to ask um ask you because I was really um in, um interested on in knowing what is one of your uh, favorite memories from filming The Exorcist um besides getting the job <laughs> <laughs> yeah besides getting the job that's always the most fun for any actor right. getting the job because then everything's perfect you know nothing that's not perfect it's just everything's great and then you start shooting and it can't be as perfect as that um it's a good question um you know the whole thing was really fun uh, in a very uh, bizarre kind of way. Um, the after shooting of it, um, I mean, the most fun <laughs> in a very crazy kind of way is we actually did The Face of Death or Captain Howdy. Mm-hmm. That was the very last shot of the very last day. And um, we always thought, everybody thought the exorcist was going to wrap. But it kept going on and on and on. You know, we had a pool. If your birthday was going to, you're going to pass your birthday and all that kind of stuff. Um, and so that was the very last thing. I had accepted a commercial because we were supposed to be finished. And um, and that, well, they said, well, no, we need you tomorrow, Eileen. And I said, but I'm shooting a commercial. And they said, well, if you don't show up, we're going to report you to the screen actors so. Oh. So I don't know what my agents were, but I called the commercial people, and they said, if you don't show up, we're going to report you to the Screen Actors Guild. And I went, oh, my. Mm-hmm. You know, this has been good. So what actually happened is that, and the crew, who had really lollygagged a lot, you know, they, they, they were just slow about setting up shots because, frankly, nobody liked Billy Freakin yeah. on the set or off the set. Um, so they were really slow about it, but they knew. Oh, I said to the commercial people, well, how many spots are you shooting? And they said, two. I said, if I can get you get there by the afternoon, will everything be okay? And they said, yes. So <laughs> the whole crew knew about this. Right. And so, so they said, I think we did six or eight shots for that, for Captain Howdy. Mm-hmm. So we did them real quick. I mean, they were the setups were real quick. The shot was the same. And then they threw me in the makeup room. And, like, two people took off my makeup, and they put me in a limo and got me out, and I shot the commercial. And the commercial ran for, like, two or three years, two, two and a half years. So it was really nice that I got to do that. Yeah, definitely. But that's what The Exorcist was like. It was always, this was The Exorcist, right? And um, I was also offered a Broadway show while we were shooting it, but I knew I couldn't take that, so I didn't, because... This was the exorcist. And obviously, nobody knew this was the exorcist at that time. Right. You know, nobody knew it was going to be the gargantuan hit that it is. 
Now, what do you think it is? Because now I heard a lot of stories when the Exorcist first came out in the mo- in the movie theaters. Like there was a lot of people like running out and crying, and you know they were so scared to see the movie. And that doesn't happen a lot now. When you know a new horror movie comes out or anything, there's not a lot of people that like you know run out of the theater because they can't sit there and watch the movie that's on the screen. Yeah, but you know people. Once a couple people did it, then other people did it because right. they could say they did it. So we we don't know how much people ran out really to the expression in horror right. from the horror or it was just like a cool thing to do and throwing up too and stuff like that is you know, you you just never know. Which is, I mean I just did a movie. It was one of my favorite shorts I've ever done. And who knows what's gonna happen to it. It's right. called Don't Go Down. And um, they had a film festival and I heard a little girl ran out of the theater. She was so scared. <laughs> oh, it was last day, one of my favorite parts I've ever done. Like, she's, my character's killing people, and this, this guy who's going to be killed, he's, why do you kill people? And she says, because it's fun. Because <laughs> <laughs> you stick a knife in someone, and you get such a rush. And so her whole character is like that because they killed her husband in front of her. So it's all revenge. But that was so much fun. Now, Exorcist came out in, um, when did it come out? December 26th, right? Wait. December 26th? December 26th. 26th. The day after Christmas? Yeah, I think that was the release date. It was December 26th, 1973. Are you yeah, I was just going to ask, um, is there a specific reason they released that movie after Christmas? <laughs> I no, I, 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 I don't remember it being released the day after Christmas. I don't know if someone says that, then I guess it's true. Yeah. But I don't remember. Yeah. Seems to me, and I could be wrong, it's a long time ago, but I thought it was released in February. It said, it said on the... Not, not in December. I, when I looked it up on Google, it said December 26, 1973. That was Something's the, wrong there. Something's wrong there. Because we shot it in 73. Yep. And I honestly thought it was released in 74. Ooh. But anyway, it it is what it is. <laughs> right. And I also seen, like, under it, because that was uh, under, um... It was under the, um, the like, official, like, Exorcist, little information. You put it in on Google and it comes up. And then it also said The Exorcist is The Exorcist is the ninth highest grossing film of all time in the U.S. and Canada. I thought it was, well, it's the highest grossing horror film. Yeah, yeah. The highest grossing horror film of all time. Yeah. Especially making way for, you know, obviously, um, just to digress a second, it really burns me, like all these movies coming out now, and they say, oh my God, it made, you know, $200 million, or it made this and that. Well, I don't know about Rhode Island, but in L.A., now it costs you $18 to go see a movie, and some places 24 And so no wonder the grosses are so high. Right. You know? And I know, sounds like your dad, well, I remember when the newspaper was 20 cents, you know? <laughs> I remember when a couple of so it's not quite that, but still, even up to, a, you know, a couple of years ago, um, we were going to movies for $6.50. Yeah. Um, you know, the Screen Actors Guild had discount tickets, so it was like six and a half dollars and then it went up to nine, and then it went up to ten, and now the discount tickets are $12 or something like that. So, um, the, those, the, the, those, those... Money figures are funny. Yeah, yeah, definitely. But, yeah, counting for today's inflation, the exodus is still the, the highest grossing film ever made. Or film ever made. Yeah. That... What's the biggest grossing film ever made? Oh, I have no idea. Is that still Gone with the Wind? Is it Gone with, was, is it gone with the Wind? I had no idea. For a while, for a while, well, Gone with the Wind is way up there making, you know, obviously um, room for um, inflation. But anyway, let's go back to... Um, Let's go back to The Exorcist and my career and my book. <laughs> yeah, definitely. So I, um, another question is, uh, people always ask um, what the makeup process is like, but um, what's the removing makeup process like? That's funny you should ask that because um, and I, I did a lot of makeup things on a lot of shows besides yeah. just 
the exorcist. And it takes about an hour and a half to take makeup off um, because they're all prosthetics, which is little pieces of plastic that they put on your face. <laughs> and they, it has to be, it's not even like a Band-Aid, but they don't rip it off like a Band-Aid. They have to take it off very, very slowly and use a solvent to take off the glue. So it can take up to an hour and a half, and by then you just want to go home. Mm-hmm. You know, the call to the exorcist, and we shot in New York, by the way, but it was usually like 6 or 6.30 in the morning, mm-hmm. and by then it was 5 or 6, and you just really wanted to go home. Right. But it's, it's a very painstaking process. Did you did you say the exorcist was shot in New York? After we got a facial, huh? Did you say the exorcist was shot in New York? Yeah. Was it really? I, I didn't even I didn't know that. I didn't think it was shot in New York. The locations, um, the outside locations, were shot in Georgetown, in Washington D.C. Oh. Okay. And uh, but uh, all the interiors were shot in the studio in New York City. Oh, no way, dude. That's... And if you want to find out about all that stuff, I wrote a book. I know. <laughs> so, exercising my demons. Yeah, exercising your demons. I was just about to mention that. I was just about to mention that you are um, you are an author. You have a book um, called "Exercising um, Exercising My Demons." It's about your career in The Exorcist, right? Yeah, and how I got to be an actress. But I have to give credit to this guy Dan Moubier. He actually wrote it, and I just talked it. Right. And it's been called "You'll Laugh, You'll Cry, and You'll Definitely Be Inspired," <laughs> and you'll find out everything you wanted. And the chapters are very short. So if you have, um, you know, short-term uh, <laughs> concentration or anything like that, or you don't have a lot of time, yep. you don't have, feel like you have to read the whole book at once. You can read two or three pages in a chapter, and you'll find out how this um, little, skinny, flat-chested, but too little girl who everybody said you can't, you won't, what makes you think you're not pretty enough, you're not sexy enough, you're not anything enough, what may, you know, how this little girl uh, created this acting career and that, you know, went on to shoot The Exorcist. So I think in that sense, it's very fascinating. And there's, in the beginning, there's a little section on following your passion, really. And it doesn't have to be an actor. It can be a writer, a director, producer, wardrobe person, makeup person, or even other things outside of the business. Say you just want to be a mom. And you follow that passion, or you want to open a candy store or a bakery or something like that. Just follow that passion and don't let any negativity stop you. Because for some reason, negativity is much stronger than positivity. And people just love to say, oh, you can't do that. You can't open a store. You can't. I mean, can you imagine if someone said that to the guy who put together Facebook or Amazon? Right. You know, I... Especially Amazon. Right, you know, I can't is the um, it's the easy way out. So, pardon? I, I said I can't is just the easy way out. You know what I mean? Uh, the easy way out to be negative? Yeah, yeah. It, like you know, when people say like, "Oh, I I can't do it," you know, it's just because they don't want to put in the work and all like the stuff that comes with it to um, to make what they want to no, do. No, I think it's the other people that convince them that it's not going to happen. And um, I think the reason people don't do um what they want to do is out of fear. And, we, you know, for some reason, we all grow up with, well, what if it doesn't work? What if I'm a failure? What if I write a book and nobody wants to publish it? So instead of saying, so what? If you fail, you pick yourself up and you, you know, as strength and not, just pick yourself up and start all over again. Because <laughs> um, if I had listened to, to people, uh, you know, I'd be sitting in Long Island somewhere thinking about the career I'd never had. Right. So anyway, that's in the first part of the book. And then uh, funny stories, my Me Too, I had a Me Too incident uh, that's in the book about my first summer in summer stock. God, that guy was awful. <laughs> <laughs> and happy things and sad things. And what happened when I first came to L.A. and uh, meeting. Then, then we go into the screen test because I did do a screen test. Um, and meeting everybody and stuff like that. And then funny things that happen on the set. Because, you know, people generally know the scary stuff. Right. You know, nobody really knows the funny stuff. So I tried to write funny stuff. 
Which um, brings me to, to wrap up this interview, Eileen. Um, how can people reach out to you um, to grab your book, uh, maybe to grab an autograph? And I know you make little um, statues from The Exorcist that you also sell. Excuse me. The best way to do that, but I caution you, um, don't go on a chat with me just because you want to talk to me. That's not fair. <laughs> if you want to just talk to me, go, go on the notifications or whatever you call that stuff. And I'll be glad to answer. That's why I don't use my fan pages because I like to be interactive with fans. But don't don't try and do it, you know, to pretend you're interested in your in buying something, but you just really want to chat with me because it makes me very angry. <laughs> and I don't know what I will do, but you'll definitely get blocked. But anyway, if you're serious, definitely. Um, go to my Facebook page. It's the best way. It's under Eileen Dietz. I have several pages in there. It's the one of me, regular, holding a picture of Captain Howdy. Go there and tell them I'm interested in buying your book. Or uh, I also sell, I don't have any right now, but down the line I sell these fabulous Pazuzu statues yes. that nobody else has. I sell Pazuzu Hag scripts, photographs, autographs, all that kind of I go to a convention and everybody says, I mean, you have a little store. <laughs> <laughs> I have a can of Captain Howdy's green pieces. Do you really? <laughs> yeah, that looks great in the pantry. And then some friends of mine made some hot sauce. And it's so hot, it'll make your head spin. <laughs> um, so I have a lot of that stuff. My friend is, um, every once in a while, you can look at IveenDeets.com because my friend is supposedly putting a new web page together to hasn't happened yet. Okay. So yeah, if definitely if you need anything to bring from Eileen, go to her Facebook page and uh, reach out to her. But um, don't bullshit her. Really get something if you're gonna. I promise. To her. <laughs> if, yeah. No, it's a notification. I promise. If you have any specific questions, yep. I'll answer them. There you go, Eileen. I want to thank you so much for doing this episode for me. Oh no no, it's absolutely my pleasure. I, you know, it's um, obviously. Actors love talking about themselves, but I hope I talk about things, and I hope you guys would uh, be really interested in finding out more about the exercise, which is only 20 minutes, and I'll be glad to tell you as much as you want to hear. And uh, don't let this stop you from ordering the book, but I am making an audio book, and I'm bound to be sure it's going to be out by Christmas. Oh, by Christmas? Yeah, I'm bound to see. I'm a person that needs goals. Mm-hmm. And I need deadlines and goals and stuff like that. So I just made one for myself. Nice. Yeah, so there you go. Eileen, she's coming out with a, um, an audio book for her book as well. But I'd grab the book before the audio book comes out. Yeah, uh, so, say it again. I said, I said, no, I was just saying um, that's awesome that you're coming out with an audio book and everybody should grab the book before the audio book comes out. <laughs> And then you can have both. Yeah, then you can have both, exactly. And I'll check back with you, um, you know, like before it's going to come out, so that, you know, we can do a little PR on it. Yeah, definitely. That'd be great. That'd be awesome. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, well, you have a nice weekend. You too. And enjoy gloomy weather. I know. And uh, <laughs> we have June gloom, but it's worse. Than, like, when we have June gloom, the sun's supposed to come out at noon. But we, I like it. You know, we'll be complaining about 95 degree weather before you know it. Oh, oh yeah, I know. It's coming soon, too, so. <laughs> okay, well, um, you know, upward and onward, you can always check out the other films that I've done. They're, um, um, most of them are on Amazon or on Walmart. I did a film called Clownado that's a lot, a lot of fun. And that's, um, um... I, I don't know if it's out there yet, but it'll be on Amazon. And I did a film called um, uh, The Possession Diary. That's a really, really fun film. This woman is so wonderful. In it. It's basically a one-woman film. So look for that. I look for any films I'm in, because I can guarantee you, lately, any film I'm in is a good film. I've done some really <laughs> weird films along the way. But... Um, Anything I've done recently, any of these indies, is really worth taking a look at. Yeah, definitely. It's great to still see you active, too. I'm doing a lot of films. 
I'm still active. They're going to have to carry me out feet first. <laughs> Eileen, okay, I'm going to go. Uh, bye, all you guys out there. Have a nice weekend. This demon is saying goodbye for now. And remember that this is, you're listening to The Darkest Before Dawn. So come back again some other time, won't you? 